You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, hosted by Joey and Holly Baird. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is on the air, and it's heard on WNOV 860 AM and W293CX 106.5 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. WWDB 860 AM in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. WAAM 1600 AM and 92.7 FM Ann Arbor, Michigan. And KMET 1490 AM Banning, California. Coming up on the program today, we're going to go over five things you should do before you bring those potted plants in the house for the winter, as well as what good leaves to put in the garden and what leaves to avoid putting in the garden, as well as our guest, author, Summer Rain, will be with us, plus your garden questions. The hour is packed, so let's start right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So glad you've taken time to join us on the program today, whether you're in Milwaukee, Southeast Michigan, Banning, California, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, or listening through the Simple Radio app or the TuneIn app, or through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com under the Radio tab on Podcast Replay or In-Studio Video Replay. Thank you for, very much for tuning in. I'm your host, Joy Barrett. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and a woman who doesn't like clapping. <laughs> Holly Barrett. There you go. <laughs> Some people don't like clapping. You're one of them. No, uh, you can find all of our content at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com under the uh, where we have over 1,400 garden videos, short and long format in a variety of genres of the gardening world, as well as every segment of this show over the last 96 episodes. If you want to get a hold of us, or the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, for that matter, is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root-to-soil contact. Leave the shovel and the spade in the shed. Hand-welded and made in the USA, and we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. If you want to get a hold of us with your garden question or concern of your garden, you can do that in a variety of different ways, and they all revolve around the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Communication Hotlines. Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields prune and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, you can visit ivyorganics.com and send an email through the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant email inbox. That email address is twvgshow at gmail.com. You can also send us a text on the Instant Access IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Instant Access text hotline. Send your questions. Text us at 414-368-9311. Again, that's 414-368-9311. It is the later portions of summer. Fall will soon arrive, and winter will be here before we know it in the upper portions of the United States. Um, and we're going to talk about what we what you would need to do and what you need to do if you're going to bring in potted plants to overwinter them in your home. Now, whether you have flowers or herbs uh, such as basil uh, or plants on the porch that you're wanting to bring in either overwintering or try to get the most out of them as uh, the when, as the evenings and nights get cooler there's some things in which you need to follow and observe before just taking the plant walking in the house and saying okay here we go okay so first before you even think about what plants you want to bring in you need to think about if you have a place to bring your plants in so you need to think about space and lighting space and lighting is important because uh if you don't have enough space, you're going to have problems. If you don't have enough light, these plants are not going to survive. And some people only have container gardens, and they want to try to bring as many plants in as possible in order to prolong the life of those plants to get a little bit more out of them as the night, you know, as we get into fall and, and in the November months uh, in this in the areas of the of uh, the country to uh, see what we can do. If you do not have enough light, obviously a south-facing window is the key pl- time, key location. It gives you a lot of light. Now, during the colder portions of the mo- of the of the year, it's not going to give you as much light as obviously the summer will. So you can incorporate a grow light such as the Happy Leaf LED grow light. Uh, uh, home gardeners affordability with a professional uh, level of light available to the plants in all levels of spectrums uh, that they do need. 
Uh, so you need to figure out what you need to where and and if you have those requirements. Right. So you definitely want to think about your light and also your space. Maybe you have a lot of light, but you don't have a lot of space where that light is. So you have to be conscientious of that. You also want to only bring healthy plants in. So if the plant is diseased, it's struggling, it's not doing well. Don't. You're don't, not going to save it. You're not going to baby it. Oh, I feel bad. It's going to die. It's going to die. And if it's your last whatever pepper plant, then hopefully you can grow another one next year. But if you bring it in, it's, it's not going to get better. It's actually, most times, it's going to get worse because you're bringing it into a closed, contained uh, environment uh, where the, it, it will actually increase the problem than if it was outside. So also, you need to do your research uh, on what you're bringing in. Well, right. And if you can, if, if it is ideal to bring it in, sometimes, especially if it's a perennial, you want it to stay outside. You want it to get those cold hours. But some perennials you can bring in. So you have to do your research Something like you can you can overwinter pepper plants, but there's a way to do it. There's a proper way to do it, so you want to make sure you know how to do it. That's right. Uh, also, if you bring plants in that are, for example, infested with white flies in the yard, you're going to bring them into the house. And because there are no um, insects inside your home that will eat, the white, flies. eat the white flies what happens multiply 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 and the problem becomes even greater but there are plants that you can keep in the basement where you want it to get go a little bit dormant and that's okay too so some tender perennials like do like that period of dormancy so you can overwinter especially something like a lavender or a rosemary in your garage or basement if the temperature doesn't go below 20 degrees fahrenheit or above 40, they won't freeze, but they will stay dormant. So you don't want to let them dry out, though, so you still have to keep that in mind. If it's out of sight, out of mind, then you want to make sure that you are watering them. You don't have to water them every day or anything like that, but you want to be aware of the soil drying out. Right. If, if we're not keeping these, th- if, we're, if they're going to dormancy, they don't need to, maybe once or twice e- over the winter they need water. But if you're trying to grow them, you've got to keep the water to them. Uh, what are the things we need to be aware of here? Um, If you don't have the space, you could take cuttings, like, for example, something like a coleus. Maybe you really like that coleus. You can propagate that really easily. You could put it in some soil, and then as it's going to grow throughout the winter. Now, coleus is a green, uh, wide-leaf plant that has a vast variety of colors. There's all sorts of ones from greens to maroons to pinks to yellows. And and a, a secret here, and what some people will do is if they're at a restaurant or a gathering, and they see a very nice colored one. I may have done this. They will take a cutting and put it in their purse or the bottom of their shoe and take it home and root it, and then they, too, will have a cutting, or uh, in about, you know, once it roots, they'll have a plant in the next six months of I think that. You're just, like, you're just like growing. You're growing for the plant. That's what you're doing. Well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't think now, there's anything now, wrong with taking with, a cutting no, if you're at a restaurant. Well, here's the thing. With the cuttings, keep this in mind, and whether you care about this or not, I'm going to put it out there because that's what we do. Some plants are copyrighted where you it is illegal for the grower or the nursery or the homeowner to actually take cuttings off the plant in which they bought. By law, it's illegal to do such. Many people ignore that law, but I'm just saying that that, that does exist. That's nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So anyway... Well, you can copyrighted plants. This is where we're at now in the world. Yes, that's this right. This is the huge concern. Well, I'm just saying here. Okay. So, but you can take cuttings from a coleus, for example, and, and, right. and re uh, put it in a very small pot, and then as it grows, you can up pot it over the winter months, and then you have a very nice plant in order to bring outside in a container in the ground by springtime. And it'll give you something to do. Yes. Um, so the other one is is that you want to give favor to your favorite plants. So if you do have a beautiful coleus and you have the space for it and you want to bring it inside, bring it inside. Or if you have what happens. Prioritize. Prioritize, right. So if you are like, this is my plant, I put it outside, I do this, X, Y, Z, I've had it for however many years, then definitely don't don't leave that plant out in the cold. Yes. Some tender per, uh, perennials um, do have a dormancy period, okay, yeah. Uh, when it when it comes to such things like that. Another thing to keep in mind is Joe had mentioned is bugs, and that's one thing is that I think the number one thing people forget. Uh, right. They they bring it inside, and no preparation is performed on that container, and then all of a sudden, like we talked about with the white flies, you had three. Now you've got three hundred and three thousand and thirty because they 
Some of these bugs will re- will multiply, reproduce without mating, rare, very rapidly within days uh, of one another. So, I guess you also want to think about is when you're going to bring these plants indoors. You don't want to wait until you have your heat on in your house. Tomorrow it's going to freeze. I got to bring it in. <clears throat> right, exactly. It might it might be cooler right now today, but then we still have a lot of August left. So you kind of want to think about just depending on where you are, if the temperature outside is similar to the temperature in your house, you have your windows open, you're kind of moving towards that fall temperature, that's when you want to bring them in. Uh, that transition period. Before you bring them in, uh, regardless if you see an infestation of bugs or nothing, we want to take that plant and we want to... F- blast the water on it to knock any of the dirt debris bugs off of it uh, before we bring it inside the home. If you do see a problem with insects, we want to properly identify what bug it is and then see if there is an organic means of removal of that bug without having to use very harsh chemicals on that plant, regardless if it's an edible or ornamental plant that you're bringing into your home. Then the transition can happen, as you were speaking about. The days and temperatures are almost equal from inside and outside, so there is not that shock of uh, immediate 40 degrees to 80 degrees or whatever the temperature is from outside to inside, and these plants have that difficult time adjusting and sometimes will go into shock and drop a lot of their foliage. Right, and again, you want to do your research, but if you are digging up a plant, you're going to pot it, you might want to kind of baby it outside a little bit while you do that but make sure you are shaking off the roots and shaking off any sort of insects that you do see on those roots if you're bringing a plant in such as a coleus or fill in the blank that's that's not going that that you're trying to keep alive all winter long so you can take back out next year we do want to remember that we have to feed these plants some type of fertilizer uh, if it is needing immediate assistance because it is a discoloration of a yellowing because of lack of nitrogen or purple because of a lack of fo- uh, phosphorus, then you want to go with a liquid fertilizer or a compost tea. If it is healthy and you, you can apply a, a granular organic fertilizer, which will slow release over a 60 to 90 day period and will be very beneficial, you just sprinkle it on top, work it in the first inch or, uh, inch or so of the uh, uh, the container, and you're fine. If you're digging a plant up from outside and trying to take it indoors, uh, based on that type of plant, you may or may not be able to be, or be successful with it. You do want to put it in good compost or potting soil. You do not want to just set it in the native soil in which it came out of the garden or your flower bed uh, because that can harbor insects and diseases. And uh, that type of soil is not good for containers as it is very compactable in a container state. Right. That's uh, a good point there. So if you're going to uh, do this, uh, we want to start thinking about when the right time in which it is to bring these plants in and what you're bringing in in order to uh, get them ready for the transformation from outdoors to indoors and by following these several steps uh, we are able to do that and have successful transform uh, having successful plants that will uh, start uh, will that will be healthy all winter long or at least somewhat healthy all winter long in order to get them uh, back out into the garden next year. Well, when we come back, don't go anywhere. We're going to talk about the right leaves in which you can add to your garden. A lot of people can uh, put a lot of things in the garden. There are some things you want to be aware of. We just do not want to add every single leaf that we find and throw in the garden, and we'll give you the reasons why. You can find more information out about us at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. to reach Joey and Holly at TWVG Show or hashtag TWVG. 
Pharmaceuticals essential oils are high grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit Dharmaceuticals.com. Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5 in 1 planting tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Digs perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Helpful for weeding. ProPlugger.com. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. Bobex is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. Bobex deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit Bobex.com. B-O-B-B. E-X-dot-C-O-M. Spending time scrubbing pesky dirt off your hands after gardening? Use Workman's Friends Superior Skin Cream with added barrier protection. Creating a protective layer on your skin surface, allowing for easy cleanup, all while moisturizing and healing your skin. Non-greasy, fragrant-free, and fast-absorbing. Apply first, get to work, wipe clean. This friend has you covered for whatever you're getting into. Visit WorkmansFriendBrand.com. Don't leave your soil naked. This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe. Organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products. From plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides. Organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit BioSafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. If you're not going to grow a cover crop, cover your soil with something. Anything. It will help your soil quality over the winter. And protect your soil from leaching nutrients. Use leaves or tarps straw or grass clippings all are great options keep your soil healthy shield and seal vacuum sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products unique black and clear in all black bags protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags find out more at shieldandseal.com beans and barley marketing cafe a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side and greater milwaukee area where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cards, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Caterina Bill, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414-278-7878, and online at beansandbarley.com. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden Systems, Rowmaker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. This is Mike Novak. And this is Peggy Malecki. From the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki. Broadcasting out of Chicago. However, right now you're listening to Joey and Holly Baird, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. And they also said, or back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. I don't think we're supposed to say that in one sentence. Oh, we just did. Okay, here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through creating cutting-edge, natural, and organic-friendly garden products. Based on research and innovation, after 28 years, they are the leader in the organic garden lawn and garden industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolids or composted household waste or synthetic chemicals. Instead, they have manure-free fertilizers, organic soils, insect control, and liquid fertilizers. If you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family, that is the founding principles of what Dr. Earth is all about. They have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow organically. Visit DrEarth.com for more information where to buy. 
Leaves contain a tremendous amount of nutrients and micronutrients and macronutrients is in order to help feed our soil. We have practiced for many years bringing leaves into our garden from our property and the street in order to build the organic levels in our soil and to feed our soil. But there are things that we need and uh, you need to be aware of before just bringing any leaf into the garden. There are good things and bad things about leaves, and here's what we need to know about them. Now, the reason why leaves are so nutrient-dense is because the roots of the tree go deep down into the earth, and they bring up all those nutrients, and then they deposit them into the leaves so the leaves can grow. So you want to think about that as you're putting on your garden, but you also want to think about things that you could be putting that are harmful onto your garden or into your compost. Not all diseases are okay. However, a lot of times we see on maple trees uh, the black tar-like spots, and that is called maple, uh, t- uh, what is it called? La- maple. It's called black tar spot. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, that, doesn't, uh, that doesn't have any adverse effect on your garden. So you can use those leaves safely. They're not, they don't look pretty, but they are safe to use. And so if you do have a fungus, you have a weird leaf problem, you have some other issue with your leaves, and it's a different type of tree. Maybe it's a, um, a oak tree or what's another common tree? Elm. Elm. Elm tree. Then you would want to do your research. So you could you could reach out to an arborist. You could do some research online. Um, you could ask us. But you want to make sure that you are putting what would be deemed as healthy leaves onto your soil. Kind of a rule of thumb. And uh, when we say rule of thumb, it doesn't apply to everything. But it's a good good guideline here is... If, if, for for example, if an oak tree or an elm tree or a maple tree has a problem with a leaf uh, disease, it, most times that disease is not transferable to the vegetation in which we're growing in our garden because it's a different species of issue. Right. Most of the time. Yes. A lot of times. Rule of thumb. Rule of thumb, yeah. yeah. But yeah. you want to definitely do your research, especially because, like you had mentioned, it, it might be affecting the leaves or might be affecting the look of the leaves. But if that issue is actually affecting the tree, then it's okay. But if it's affecting the leaves and then it could affect your garden, then that's something you want to pay attention to. Proper identification of the disease uh, there is a great tool they have on the computers now. It's called the Internet, and you can do a lot of research. Uh, you can use your favorite search engine. Favorite search engine. and Whatever that is. And, and try to describe it in the search engine and then go to images and kind of see where you, the closest matchup is. That That's how we learn a lot. Now, not all resources are good resources. Keep that in mind uh, when it comes to identification of anything. Uh, you want right. a good resource. So, yeah, that's correct. Um, now, if your tree has been treated for a pest or a disease, you want to find out if if those leaves are okay to use. A lot of times, something when stuff is, when a tree is inoculated for something as common as the emerald ash borer, there's two different qual- classifications of what's being used to treat the emerald ash borer to inoculate the tree for that. One is a very um, or a very chemical heavy. Uh, remedy, and so that's going to then transfer it to the leaves, and then that could cause problems to your soil, your compost, whatever. The other one is the toxicity would stay and in, in, infect other things along the line. Basically, yeah. yeah, the toxicity doesn't grow out or dissolve, out, or, dissolve or, or anything yeah. like that. The other one is Omri listed, and I think it's called treason or something like that. That's okay to use. That's fine to use. It does. What, what is Omri listed, by the way, Omri for those who are an, not is familiar an or, with it? Organic chemical, um, or, or, organic or, or institution that shows that this this um, product is safe to use. It's organic. It's certified. Right. O M R I. Omri uh, listed. And if you go to the garden center, I mean, you'll see it on all sorts of stuff. Isn't it like Organic Material Review Institute or something? I think so. Yeah, yeah. something of that nature. But yeah, when you see that. Keep in mind now uh, that be, it is organic and it's safe to use as an organic means. That doesn't mean I can use more of it because it's le- it's labeled organic. Right. You more is follow, not better. You still want to follow directions, follow the application instructions. S- sprays, fertilizer, whatever. Whatever it is. Yeah. Yep. So that's something you want to keep in mind with any product you use. But um, whether it's organic or not, you want to follow the instructions and use it properly. But if you paid somebody to come out and spray your tree with something, 
find out what it is, and the, if it's an arborist, they should, if it's a true arborist, they should be right. able to know. If you and they for, shouldn't be scared you, or hesitant to give you the information in which they the, the product in which they use. But if you paid for Jim Bob's questionable tree service, then you're probably going to have some questionable leaves. On that or tree. you may not be able to get a hold of Bob anymore <laughs> because he's one and done like and if gone. You just wanted cash. That's right. You you These things see. do happen very, does, very it does regularly. Happen. Yeah, yes. they go to an entire neighborhood and mm-hmm. treat people's trees or whatever. And then you and then end up killing them or making them worse, and you never see the fellow or the lady again. They've got your hundred dollars, and they're somewhere else. And I think that just circles back to to do your research. Yes. Um, so leaves. If the leaves the, themselves the, yeah. are a thicker leaf, like an oak leaf, you want to shred it. So you could use something like if you have a leaf blower that has a reverse, where it vacuums them up and then shreds it. You could do that. You could use like your uh, your B- bagger bagger mulcher on your mower. But you do want to shred those leaves because they're thicker, they're more dense, they're not going to break down as fast. If you put them on your garden and it rains a lot, there could be mold that's growing and things like that. So you want to shred those leaves. Mats down and prevents penetration of moisture through them. Now, the um, asterisk to that comment is if you have a mixture of a lot of different leaves and some oak leaves, not necessarily have to shred them because the the distribution of those oak leaves is not as concentrated in one central location uh, if there is a mixture of right, them. Right, but if you're putting just some yes, bulk of oak absolutely, leaves. absolutely, yes, that's right. And the reason why we're so careful about this is because we've worked hard to build our soil. We want to have good, healthy soil. We don't want to kill our plants. We don't want to kill our soil. So this is something that you want to consider. If you don't if you don't care about your soil, just putting your leaves somewhere else, whatever, then... Not an issue. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what else we have here? Uh, so aside from leaves, anything that you're gonna, anything that has been sprayed or had something like glyphosate on it, you which don't want. The, which is the the, the generic, big big killer. The of, big killer. Yeah. Yep. It's uh, in a white bottle. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you're not. If it, if you're if, even if your grass is treated maybe by you or by somebody else, and you put those clippings in your garden, your compost. It's going to cause issue. Those uh, those chemicals are not water soluble, so what they are water soluble. So they're well, they're not, but they're going to um, they're going to poison your your plants. Uh, weed and feed contains an active ingredient, which is 2,4-D, and weed and feed is applied to your lawn to increase the vibrancy of the grass and also kill the broadleaf weeds that you have in or the dandelions, the lamb quarters, <laughs> fill in the blank broadleaf plants, and that doc- toxicity that item in there is 2,4-D, which is on the farm when I grew up. That's what we used to spray the pastures where the cattle grazed, so it would kill everything except for the grass. And 2,4-D is originated from Agent Orange. So it's, 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 not, the, it's not the it's same. Not the same, but it's but in it the has, same area. It's the same chemical makeup yeah. of the family. Yep. So you take that the, those grass clippings, put in your compost pile, break down to a compostable form, a year, two years, three years later, put it in your garden. That active ingredient is still so potent that it will kill your broadleaf plants, even in a compostable form. So you do not want to even mess with uh, that type of uh, ingredient uh, when uh, your or, or item whenever you're using it for edible consumption or garden. Well, Holly, uh, summer is here, full swing. And those Japanese beetles are in everybody's yard, and they're wreaking havoc on our gardens, our um, ornamentals, our, our beans, our vegetation, Ourselves. everything. Yes. Yeah. Well, if you're looking to be successfully controlling those beetles without damaging the environment, look no further than Beetle Gone from Phylum Bioproducts, derived from naturally occurring uh, naturally occurring soil bacteria, Beetle Gone is the only organic solution that successfully controls beetle invaders. Just mix the powder with water and spray on your plants. Once ingested, the targeted pest will stop feeding and die. And since it's an organic BT product, you know it's a great choice to use on your fruits and veggies in addition to your ornamental flowers and trees. Not only does Beetle Gone work, but the nice thing about this product, it is safe for your beneficials such as ladybugs, butterflies, and bees, and has no issue with water toxicity. Beetle Gone uh, is the product of Beetle Gone from Phylum Bioproducts. You can find out more at phylumbioproducts.com. And for a limited time only, uh, you can get $10 $10 off your purchase by using coupon code T E N O F F. 10 off. 
Limited time only for that. That's P H Y L O M M L L O M Bioparks. When we come back, do not go anywhere. Summer Rains Oaks author will be with us. That's her name, Summer Rains Oaks. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Got a question? Email the show at twvgshow at gmail.com. Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter earth auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. Power Planter earth auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root-to-soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthy and more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand-welded and made in the USA lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. The Handy Safety Knife is a patented, high-quality knife that's worn like a ring, so it's always conveniently at hand and very easy and efficient to work with. That's why you'll find the Handy Safety Knife at work in a wide range of industries and applications. Learn more at HandySafetyKnife.com. Use coupon code WVG to get 10% off and free shipping one time use only at HandySafetyKnife.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy, homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third generation family owned company proudly grows nutrient rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin, enabling us to produce high quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. Don't let the fall garden close out until you put in garlic, or as some people call it, the stinking rose. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Garlic is one of the easiest crops in which you can grow in your garden. And it doesn't even have to go in the garden. It can go in a raised bed a flower bed along the side of the driveway next to the house. I would avoid putting it in containers in colder climates because it would freeze as a solid block of ice. You can select from hardneck garlic, which does do better in the hardier climates of the northern portions of the United States, and softneck garlic that will tolerate the cold but does do a little bit better in warmer areas. Softneck will not produce escape as hardneck will. Garlic is mostly planted in the fall here in our gardens the first weekend of October and harvested based on the variety in late May, June, early July. It can be planted in the spring but it can be tricky as you need to get it in prior to the warm temperatures coming so it can have time to have cold hours to properly develop the bulb in order to get the cloves. There are many different varieties available in the market. You can go and get them as soon as they are available from MIGardener.com. 
You can also find regional garlic from your farmer's market. You want to avoid garlic from the grocery store. as It's a generic garlic that's come from overseas most of the time, has little to no flavor, and the variety is unknown, and you're not certain of what diseases that may carry. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Today is the day. Pack the kids up and head over to Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center for their first of four consecutive Saturday summer markets, their second annual, where there will be over 40 vendors of foods, crafts, produce, and more, as well as we will be there. And it's all free. You can go and browse. There's no uh, fee to get in or just uh, have a good time with the family. You can go to Blue Mills at 4930 West Loomis Road, just south of Layton and Greenfield. If you have any questions, you can call 414-282-4220 or go to bluemills.com. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Berry. Holly, let's go to the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline and bring in our next guest. Summer Rain Oaks is all about infusing sustainable thinking and practices into the heart of the fashion, beauty, and food industries. Most recently, she has been focused on sustainable food, agriculture, and horticultural systems and our connection to what we grow and what we eat. She lives in Brooklyn with her uh, pet foster hen. Welcome to the program, Summer. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for taking time out of, uh, obviously, your very busy schedule to join Holly, myself, and all of our listeners and enlighten us with some of your gardening wisdom with all of us. Uh, you're passionate about house plants, and what are some good house plant watering hacks? People often put them in their home, forget about them. Uh, what are some ways in which we can keep them watered, and, and what are some tricks? Well, I think the first thing to know is that you really want to water plants in relation to the light that you're giving them. So if you're giving them a lot of intense light, you're going to need to water them more. So if you're traveling, then I would say pull your plants a little bit further back from the light just so you don't have to water them as much. And I think that there's other great ways to hack the watering system. And I actually highlight this on my YouTube channel, Plant One On Me, but I love these things called hydro spikes, and they work with terracotta spikes that you could put water in, and then they have a tube coming out of the terracotta spike top, and you put that tube in a watering vessel, and it pulls up the water through capillary action and can actually water the plants for you. So it, 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 when we talk about capillary action, it, the, the plant is basically watering itself when that spike is inserted with the water capsule, and it only draws the moisture when it needs it. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, there are certain things that could prohibit that. So a hydro spike is not like the be-all, end-all. Oftentimes, we could get gunked up with minerals in the water. So it's something that you wouldn't use on a regular basis, but definitely something that you could use to help you out if you're traveling or if you're going on vacation with your um, and you're leaving your plants at home. That's a that's really neat concept and something that you can definitely use. Now, people are often gifted cacti as houseplants, and sometimes they don't do so well. What are some what's some great advice for cacti and how to help keep it a little bit longer or maybe a lot longer? Well, I think a lot of people are gifted cacti or succulents just because they are reportedly easy plants to care for, but they are actually challenging if you don't have a lot of light in your home. So for us in the Northern Hemisphere, you want to have a Southern or Western exposure, which is giving you really solid light. Um, And sometimes that Southern or Western exposure might be blocked by another building or a tree, so you might not be getting as intense light as you need. But generally when we're talking about cacti and most succulents, they are going to need a lot of light 
And in relation to the light, you're probably going to water it a little bit more, um, even though you don't have to water cacti and succulents as, as much. And if you're somebody who is a little bit more heavy-handed on the watering, if you're a little bit more like a helicopter plant parent, then I would suggest using a little bit more of a well-draining potting medium. Um, and if you don't have that light in your house, there's a lot of great grow light options now in the market and with lights that don't look like purple, blue, and red. <laughs> well, with cacti, is it very similar? We've, we've got a cacti and we know very little about it. Uh, is it much like a traditional ornamental plant where at a certain stage you're going to have to up-pot this thing? Uh, we get root bound just like a normal plant, right, even though it's a cacti? It really depends actually on the on the cactus and how fast it's growing. And in many cases, cacti are really slow growers. So if you've ever tried to grow a cactus from seed, um, you'll know it takes so many years for it to actually even look like uh, something that you could potentially even sell on the market. Um, So, you know, because their root systems might not be as extensive as some quicker foliage growing plants, they probably don't need to be pot up again relatively quickly. And I have cacti and succulents that are growing in some pots that I've had for at least six or seven years, whereas if I had the equivalent in some foliage varieties, I'd probably be potting those up already. Now, there are exceptions to the rule, I just want to say, because like jungle cactus have become very popular, and those are more epiphytic cacti that are growing on trees or epipetric, which are growing on rocks in more of like the rainforest areas. So they will have definitely a different care um, than your traditional cacti that you would find maybe in the, the desert, if you will. Okay. Now, as an eco model and someone who is passionate about fashion and sustainability, you help connect thousands of designers to sustainable materials from all over the world. Why are sustainable materials important, and why does it make a difference? And what are sustain what is what are sustainable materials? Well, when I first started out in the industry, and I'll just like you know give an overview. I um, my background is in environmental science and entomology, and I've really looked through lots of industries. So. Fashion, um, food, you know, are just two industries that I've looked at how to actually build more sustainable supply chains. Um, so, you know, we have all heard that, like, our money goes a long way and to vote with your values and to vote with your dollar. And that's true in many cases. I mean, what we wear, what we eat, what we put on our bodies, these are all things that are connected back to the environment. And so growing plants, um, is, you know, yield not only food for us or foliage varieties, but also clothes. I mean, we just look at cotton, for instance, um, and cotton just doesn't go into our clothes. Cotton seed oil is actually used in food stuff and a number of other ways. Palm oil is another great example. Um, so, you know, these are plants and, and agricultural systems, and that could actually affect our environment if you're using pesticides or insecticides on those fields if you're using excessive fertilizer. So the idea behind my first company that I started, which actually has recently been sold, so it's called Sorcerer Style, then moved to Lasuk, and then now it just recently was sold to a Japanese textile company. But it's basically a business-to-business marketplace that connects designers to materials that can hurt the environment a lot less. Um, or that are better for the environment. Maybe it's organic cotton. Maybe it's better cotton. Um, maybe it's Kadi cotton from out of India. So these are fabrics and materials that are sourced that are uh, more have a less environmental impact on the planet. Well, you've built uh, uh, an eating uh, an app here. You've built a healthy eating habit app. It's called Food Stand. This is a really cool app. Can you let people know what the premise is, how it works, and where people can find it? Sure. And Food Stand is a, a project that I had helped on um, about, uh, I would say, two and a half, three years ago, maybe a little bit longer. Um, but the the premise of Food Stand is that it's healthy. It's little nudges. It's usually not going cold turkey that will help us eat better in our own lives, but it's little gentle nudges every day, just like little changes that um, and little wins on a daily basis. So this is something that, you know, we were looking into and I was looking into with another project of mine called Sugar Detox Me, which is helping people reduce their sugar intake. And that's essentially what Food Stand does. It says, okay, well, we could help you reduce your sugar intake 
or we could help you eating less meat, or we could help you um, by uh, increasing and eating more vegetables just through these gentle nudges. So they serve as little reminders, little notifications, um, and little reward systems for you in order to be able to remind you to eat well on a daily basis. Uh, where, where can we get that? Is that a free app in which anybody can uh, download? Yes, that's true. And you could get it on, um, and it's available for iPhone and it, as well as Android. Okay. Okay, now you have a book that recently came out just last month, um, how, to make, how to Make a Plant Love You, Cultivate Green Space in Your Home and Heart. Can you tell us more about it, maybe something interesting about it, or what we expect if we pick it up? Yeah, the premise of the book is a little bit more along the lines of a relationship guide to living with plants. And, um, you know, this really has become, I think, a, a movement, especially for those of us who are living in, you know, urban areas, because we don't always have a backyard to play in or even a balcony. So bringing plants indoors and noticing plants have become um, really wonderful, mindful rituals. And then this book really goes into a little bit more of the philosophical and spiritual premise behind having plants in our lives and developing these routines and rituals with them in our lives. So I think, like, one of the, the most interesting things about the book is that I've, you know, brought in a lot of my community who might follow me on Instagram or YouTube to contribute to the book in ways that plants have enriched their lives. And I think that's really given the book a really nice facet to see, you know, and oftentimes we might feel we're kind of alone in what we're going through, whether we're going through anxiety or depression or a recent breakup. But um, I think some of the, the stories that have been shared and how to make a plant love you show that, you know, lots of people go through these. And, you know, here's how plants have, in a way, helped them, helped them through their hard times. Uh, it's very interesting, Summer. How can our listeners uh, follow you, find out more about you? Where can we go? They can go to my website at homesteadbrooklyn.com. Um, they can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Homestead Brooklyn. And on YouTube, I do a, a daily channel called Plant One On Me. So uh, they can find out more information there. A lot of good information on that YouTube channel, by the way. Well, Summer, we greatly, <laughs> we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us on the program uh, in order to uh, enlighten Holly, myself, and all of our listeners with uh, your garden wisdom. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And when we right, come thanks. and when we come back, it's all going to be about your garden questions and our garden answers. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Check out more videos and radio content at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com where you can send us questions there as well. Send your questions in now to the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants, to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100% more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at NorwalkJuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 Juicer. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional grade soil test for the home gardener. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, email with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. MySoilSavvy.com. 
Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at MIGardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to MIGardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, Bob X, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps, Find all sponsors at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. With your hosts, Joey and Hallie Baird. If you've got a question, you can get a hold of us on the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Natural Plant Communication Hotline. Uh, Ivy Organics naturally predicts against Damp, uh, damaging sunburn insects and rodents protects against newly installed plants and trees. Shields pruned and damaged surfaces on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, shrubs. This product is non-toxic and environmentally friendly. Or you can uh, give us, um, you can send us an email at twvg show at gmail.com through the Ivy Organics 3 in 1 Plant Guard email hotline, or you can send us a text anytime at 414. 414- Three six eight ninety three eleven. So we have a caller parked, and um, we're going to put her on the air. Uh, let's go to the line one. Caller, you are on the air. Hello, caller. Good morning. Hello, how are you? Thank oh, you for I'm calling. I'm doing pretty well, thank you. I have a question about aloe vera plant. I was giving a cutting from another plant, and I am just growing it in water. And I put the... Uh, I drink green tea every morning so I put um, break the bags open and put the inside into water that I'm not throwing in. Now they seem to be doing okay but uh, what else should I do or uh, give me some idea where to go from here. Um, so you've got the, uh, the, the cutting in water right now but not in soil, correct? Yes, and just and just the insides out of the bag uh, that I've been doing for a long time. So, is, it, of them in there. has the plant developed roots in the water itself? Yes. Okay, so now would be a good time to get an all-purpose potting soil, and then you can root that in the potting soil. So you're going to root it in one part soil, one part sand. So just like a half-and-half half mix of soil and sand. Okay. Um, and then you're allowed to sit for one week, don't water it, and then... Um, and then after that one week, then you can water it as you typically do for your aloe vera, and it'll grow into a new plant. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for that. I enjoy your program. Well, yeah, thank, thank you. you for oh, listening. Oh, my God. I can't, I can't wait for you to come on. <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank so you. I appreciate your service. Yeah, thank you. Okay, looking forward to hearing from you next week. Wonderful. Awesome. I will be calling back. <laughs> you're, you're more than welcome to. We love hearing <laughs> from you. Thank you much. Bye-bye. All right. So we had another call come in over the yes. break, and he um, he had a question because his tomatoes are doing beautifully, but they're just not ripening. As is ours. As is ours, and I th- I think that's kind of common. I've been hearing a lot of this, and I don't know if it's because we had that late spring, if it's just because it hasn't gotten effectively very hot out, but it's okay if they're not ripening. I grew up where we just put the seeds directly into the soil, and our tomatoes... No transplant. No transplant, and sometimes our tomatoes didn't ripen until mid to end of August, so it's it's okay. Uh, we've got several different stages of tomatoes in our garden. 
ripening, uh, non-ripening, and just developmenting, uh, d- developmental flower stage now in all different sizes, shapes, forms. So it's been a uh, traditionally uncommon year for at least our garden and from what we're hearing others' gardens as well. Well, Holly, I got a canning question that came in uh, via email. Uh, can you can fruit pe- or can you can fruit peach peaches pears with Splenda? Or does it have to be real sugar? Sure. So you can. You can use different... I guess fr- any fruit in, in general. Right. Yeah. You can make a, like a simple syrup with Splenda. You just want to follow directions. So whether it be uh, from the National Center for Home Food Preservation or the Ball Blue Book, fr- freshpreserving.com, there is a way to safely do it. You just have to follow the directions. If you want to can, like make jam or something, you want to make it low sugar, then you would use what's called Pomona pectin. And that pectin is made for low sugar jam making. All right, another question here. I never knew this could be so invasive. When do I harvest uh, uh, horseradish horseradish, and how do I get rid of it forever? It's invading my garden and my rhubarb patch. I hope the rhubarb doesn't taste like horseradish. Well, first of all, your rhubarb will not taste like horseradish. Which which is a common. Which would make sense. The cross of a lot of different varieties Mm -hmm. here, yeah. So horseradish is a root crop and it's related to um, it's related to parsnip carrot family and it's it, no, I'm sorry, it's actually a brassica, but either way, so it's related to like broccoli, cauliflower, uh, cabbage, things like that. But what it is, it's actually a very invasive crop, as as um, Bill had stated. And so what you want that, to do—that's the person who asked the question. Yeah, yeah. Bill, yeah. Okay. Bill asked the question. Yeah. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to in early fall you can harvest that horseradish, but you want to get every little teeny tiny bit of root that you can out of the soil because what happens is that if you leave any sort of chunk of root it's going to keep growing which is very difficult because they can grow 18 24 inches in the ground so you need like a backhoe really (laughs) so you might have to eradicate a lot of it this year it might some might come back next year and this might be take a couple years and you can really get a uh, get a grasp on it by kate if you get 90 percent out of it this year it's going to be a lot easier to control it uh next year uh, real quickly, what is the difference between bread flour and all-purpose flour, Holly? So bread flour, um, so what occurs in normal flour, wheat flour, is something called gluten. Gluten is that protein um, in wheat that makes it chewy, binding, and doughy. So bread flour has a higher gluten content, which makes a better, chewier bread. Okay, so there, there you go. What is the best way to lower the pH of my garden soil? I would like to start planting blueberries in the spring. Well, this is a very good question. There are several materials in which are available at your local garden center uh, that will help lower your pH. Aluminal sulfur, aluminum sulfate, iron sulfate, and sulfur coated with urea. Each of these materials has its advantages and its disadvantages uh, to lowering the pH level of your soil. You should work this, work it in the soil uh, according to the applicational rate uh, and, and the effectiveness of it. However, the amount of time that it can take to for lowering your pH or raising your pH based on for other gardeners who may want to do that and find they have lower pH levels, uh, it can take quite a while. Uh, it can take up to one to two years. Although you can raise or lower your pH faster, uh, doing some more, uh, doing it more quickly, but this often has a risk to the plants in which you're putting in. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, other materials, uh, you can, you know, there's a lot of research in which you can do. It can be done, but you should do it correctly in order to get the best long-term effects from that for, in this application, planting blueberries in your garden. Now, that all being said, blueberries, you probably want about a four and a half to five on the acidity uh, scale there. You want to be sure that you know what level you're needing to get to in order to make your soil acidic for your blueberries. So you need a soil test. You can go to SoilSavvy.com and use coupon code TWVG19 to get 10% off your um, checkout. They'll give you a 14-point analyzation of your soil, an email, and then you know you have a baseline. 
Because if you just go into your garden and say, I'm going to plant blueberries in this corner, I need the soil to be an acidity of 4.75, for example, and you start doing these things to your soil, you can uh, over correct to the soil, add it, made it too acidic, and the blueberries won't grow, or you can mess up a bunch of different things there. So you need to have a good base for your blueberries, for the acidity, and then there's ways to maintain that acidity level over the years to make sure those blueberries are healthy and happy and producing for many, many years to come. But get that soil test, then you can figure out how to best alter the soil to a lower acidity level for the best success for those blueberries. Before we get into what's coming up next week on the program, Holly, remind them about the executive sponsor. The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Tune in next week. Do not miss the program. We're going to talk about diseases on your plants and what to do with those plants at the end of the season, as well as September garden to-do list items. And Doug Toley will be with us, soil biologist, and will always answer your garden questions. Do not miss the program. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it in its entirety, you can do that in a couple of different ways. One, by going to your favorite podcast providing website and searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. You can also go to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, clicking on the radio tab at the top of the page for full length or the highlight tab on the right-hand side for segments of all past shows. Until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You have been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joey and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcast, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.